Hello. Um, sorry, I'm just uh, setting this up. This is uh, Franz Cantor here, um, cartoonist, illustrator, and uh, teacher, toon talker, you get it, you name it. I'm going to do a little bit of a drawing today. I thought, was, I thought I'd um, do a uh, caricature live uh, in Facebook so that we can um, um, just check about, just talk, have a little talk about the process, drawing process, etc. So I thought I'd do this guy. So Steve Irwin, I think we might need a little bit of a pickup. So I thought I'd pick a subject that uh, might make us feel good. Um, so Steve Irwin is, uh, this is the reference that I'm going to be using to create a caricature. The caricatures are in many ways um, a way of uh, creating or taking control of uh, a drawing, what you're drawing. So in, it kind of breaks and bends rules. It's sort of like um, uh, simplifying or stylizing and exaggerating at the same time. And in so doing, you're learning a lot about proportion. You're learning a lot about um, contours and details and things, but you're having a sense of play. So he's, here are some of the exa examples. I've had like uh, more than 30 years experience in illustration and uh, I teach drawing. Um, if you guys want to go up to drawinghacks.art um, that's a meetup page, so um, we'll be able to do that online. There's no meetups at the moment because of the situation that we're in. Um, so my take on caricature is a little bit different to other artists. I tend to uh, look on it as a challenge, almost like a game. So the ultimate aim, of course, is to create like a likeness. I'm just throwing down a little bit of a box, so it's like a frame within a frame. The idea of this is, of course, to create a sense of composition and um, composition directs the eye to certain uh, parts of the illustration, but it also uh, creates a sense of, of balance. So it's like a, you're balancing the positive with the negative, so the negative space and the, you know, the positive object. So um, I'm going to uh, play with the proportions, which is the area of caricature. You exaggerate certain things and, and downplay other things for um, a comedic effect usually, but the ultimate aim is to create something that is kind of recognizable and that's what the, uh, the ultimate aim is, of course, but in the process, you don't want to lose your sense of, uh, sense of fun. So why am I doing Steve Irwin? Well, you know what, we're in pretty um, dire times at the moment. I just thought we might need to think about drawing something that picks us up a little bit, makes us feel good, you know? Um, so maybe if you want to leave comments in the live feed, you know, about what makes you feel good. Do you remember, do you have a childhood memory or like a cartoon or something or, um, you know, a character like, I don't know, Robin Williams or something growing up that you want to, um, maybe we should draw. Let's draw it. Let's keep this thing going, you know. So caricatures are uh, exaggeration and simplification. But really, you can, it's up to you how far you want to take the, the process um, and what you exaggerate. It's not just about making things big, but changing the diff making a difference between big and little. So you're making, you know, like, um, you're making choices along the way. So I'm just trying to, I'm just sorry, I'm studying his face. You can see, by the way, um, I'll try and get a blank piece of paper. I've actually drawn the head. I might correct the, the composition as we go uh, because I, I tend to drift a little bit. 
from the angle where I'm drawing, I'm not directly overhead the, over the top of the drawing, the camera is. Um, so I'm a little bit um, drifty, drifting left, I think, with a lot of the uh, elements of the drawing. Um, so I'm just lightly, loosely uh, creating shapes that I can play with. Sometimes I'll create like a little thumbnail, which is like a very short, uh, tiny squiggle of uh, where I want to explore in terms of shape and composition and, you know, what things to exaggerate. I'm a little bit unsure about the elements because Steve Irwin's face is very, it's very muscular, very sort of regular in many respect. So, I mean, there are round features and things that you can play with. Certainly a lot of the muscles and wrinkles and things that you find are indicators of where you could explore and change the proportions, you know, just to have fun, right? This is not about the likeness. I'm not doing a likeness just for its own reward. I'm just trying to create a sense of um, play with the, with the drawing so that I can just see what happens. I don't know what happens. This may not be as successful as I think um, or as I wish. That's just part of the, the challenge, you know? Every time you make a mistake, there's a reason why you, you make a mistake. You always go with, try to go with your gut feelings, you know, if there's a, uh, an impression of uh, uh, an expression or a, a sort of a micro expression that indicates that the character is a, a thinking about something or has a, a certain energetic quirk or personality, you know. Um, Everything is different, by the way, like, you know, sometimes characters you draw with a big nose, sometimes big ears. Um, it just depends on what the impression is at the time. And different angles might reveal different parts, different things to explore with the shape. So the nose could be totally different, you know, from a different angle. You might sort of exaggerate something. That's really the... The beauty of caricature is to, um, just to see what happens, you know, so you don't really know. There's a lot of curves. You can see the curves in the, in the reference. So if we just go to the reference for a sec, um, there's a lot of curves here, right? There's a lot of muscles uh, being pulled because he's very, very, he's a very mus he has a very muscular face and um, there's a lot of pushing and pulling in terms of the, the, uh, the forms. So that, that creates like round curves in some areas and sharper curves, sharper uh, angles and things in other areas. Okay, there's a uh, expression, like a micro expression of fun, almost like a zany, um, you know, laughing expression. So we'll try and capture that if we can. That would be good, you know? So it's not like a, we're drawing a portrait here, we're drawing a caricature. So we're having fun with the uh, shapes themselves. So if you feel like, you know, drawing <laughs> along, be my guest, go ahead, you know? This is like a we're not sure how it will end. We're not sure if it'll be successful. There's a lot of things that could go wrong, obviously. You know, I could make a faux pas. I could make a go down a different direction here. I'm already using the rubber. Not so much to erase it, but just to lighten some of the lines. I'm trying to work, I'm trying to work light and loose and find things on the paper. I tend not to have a lot of stuff going on in my head. Um, I have it like an open mind you know, I mean, there's certain things like lining elements up. Um, the use of, subtle use of, uh, like, perspective, for example. I try to always get 
a sense of um, perspective into the faces. That's why I don't like a lot of front-on um, reference material because um, it kind of gets rid of the perspective aspect, which is quite interesting to show the object in space or the, the person in a spatial, having a spatial relationship. So we've got a lot of little lines and cross lines happening here, which I'll, I'll uh, work on later. But the, the moment there's something happening with his eyes, which I want to try to, it's almost like a far away stare. Let's see if I can get, there's a highlight there, there's another highlight there. See these little circles, I'm just, these are like visual notes to say, make sure that's white. Um, so the idea of uh, working tonally on a, on a paper like this, the tone of the paper helps you, it meets you halfway. So when you're thinking, when you're drawing tonally, um, you think of highlights and darks and it helps you to create a sense of dr drama, a sense of difference, you know, between um, the, light, the highlights and the, um, and the shadow areas. And you don't have to work so hard to establish uh, half tones um, because the paper does a lot of the heavy lifting. See, I'm not pressing very hard on there. I'm just getting a little bit of difference between the, um, the volume of the hair. Uh, these are a bit looser, so I'm not going to count them, all the different hairs. There's a hair direction here, which I'll pick up with the, you know, with the highlights uh, later on. And then there's the, the middle part of the hair which of course is a bit darker from the lighting. It's picking up less light. The light is tending to go over the round edges of the, uh, the volume of the hair. So a little bit of a word on, on shape here. I'm looking at the shapes that I see in the reference. So this is something for you to think about too. Look at the shapes in the reference, right? Think about what, are, what is that shape? Reproduce it as a simple shape and you're there, right? You're, ha you're halfway there. But with a caricature, of course, you're just taking those simple shapes and, and just um, playing with them, sort of exaggerating the... Uh, the um, angles and, you know, um, sizes of things. This is a, an interesting thing. I'm actually drawing, I'm looking at this paper from an angle. So I'm trying very hard to line things up accordingly so that I don't lose myself. But of course, I'm not able to move directly over the piece, so I'm kind of, um, I've got all this equipment here. I've got two cameras, one doing a live Facebook and one doing a, um, a record for a higher res version of this project. So I don't have any expectations. It might work, it may not work. Um, you'll be the judge <laughs> later on. We'll, we'll decide together to say, hey, this sucks. Um, but that's fine if it sucks. You know what? That's fine. If a drawing sucks, that's great. That means you just, you're there, but you're not quite there. But the next time you do it, oh boy, you're going to get a bit closer. You know, what faces do you find hard to draw? Uh, for myself, anything sort of regular, uh, regular proportioned uh, faces are obviously hard to caricature because you're left with sort of a question mark as to what shapes are important here what shapes are able to be uh, exaggerated in a in a sh in a face where all the all the features are pretty you know regular um 
Ray Milland comes to mind, actually, for some reason. Just uh, uh, not even the young, the young, just the young Ray Milland, especially the young Ray Milland, but even the old Ray Milland. His features are very, um, are very even. He's sort of like a, uh, what would you call it, an old school um, silver screen star. Um, and all that implies, you know, um, the features are very heroic in terms, in proportions, you know, um, there's nothing really big or small in there. He doesn't have small eyes and big nose and things like that. So these are things that you look for and, you know, you exaggerate, um, it could be the smallest slide, the smallest um, bump on a nose, you know. But catching that and seeing it and experimenting with that in a caricature could uh, make the difference. So have a think about the light and shade. I don't want the lines to get too dark. Uh, and messy. I'm just, uh, he's, his, this is actually quite proportional, I think. Uh, I'm not exaggerating this, these features very much at all. Just a little word on, um, on this process again, if you just joined us. Um, I'm doing something to cheer us up. I'm doing something because, you know what, we're, I think we're, we're, we're self-isolating. We're trying to be good and do the right thing and things like that and really um, these are, this is like it's sad times there are people who are losing their their lives obviously and that's you know that's a terrible situation and we don't know what the future could bring in the next few months but if we try to you know stick together and, and remember that we're all in it together so it's just like drawing, you know, we're all in it together. There's no, there's no arrival date, there's no arrival or destination of, no, I'm a good drawer. No, you just keep drawing and some things you can draw well and some things you won't. And you'll find that the things you, you don't know how to draw well, right, typically faces and hands. It's because we don't practice enough drawing faces and hands. That's all it means. You know, a lot of times people tell me, I can't draw a stick figure to save my life. Well, you know what? The chances of you having to, to save your life by drawing a stick figure, I don't think that that's in the cards, do you? Um, you're going at it, uh, you're putting too much pressure on yourself, too much pressure on yourself. What you need to do is just to relax. Relax, okay? <laughs> so just relax, take it easy, slow down, slow down and um, enjoy the process. So ideally, if you're having fun, right, try to inject some element, learn something from the process, but have fun, don't be so serious about it. Why are you so serious about drawing? Why? And then, you know, the, the fact is that everybody draws. If you think about it, you start out drawing when you're a kid, you, you know, you don't judge yourself when you're, when you're a child, you just draw. And that's how it should be because, you know, it's a very, it is a strange activity. Let's face it, no animals draw. No aliens draw, as far as I know. There's no um, spaceships and, and abductions by alien artists. We just want to draw you. You know, they're all weird, mad scientists or something. Um, if there are aliens out there. I don't think this is something that aliens would be able to do. So it's very special to us. It's, you know, animals don't do this. This is a special activity. And don't be so hard on yourself. You're not a camera. You're not a camera. We have cameras for this purpose. You want to take something that is very, um, you know, uh, uh, accurate to the representation of the person then by all means use a camera but it's going to be more fun and a bigger learning curve bigger learning experience I think 
to be able to draw it. You know, I mean, this, this, these, are, these are made for us. You know, these are these pencils, right? I mean, I'll just, just briefly go over the materials. This is a polychromo. This is a wax-based color pencil. Polychromo is available in all art stores, made by Faber-Castell. This is a uh, Prismacolor, right? This is like another waxy or oil-based uh, pencil. That's for the mid-tones, the black pencils for the dark tones, the shadows, and the white pencils for the highlights. I'm also gonna help myself with some other heavy lifting art, uh, uh, materials like uh, Posca's, white Posca's, and, and um, I've brought in a blue Posca, if I want that. Um, and other materials that just sort of give a, a little bit of a, a bump to the, um, to the highlights. It's kind of like this, you know, you've got the ability to create um, darks and lights and contrast. So that gives it a sense of drama. Okay, let's uh, continue on. I am trying to, I don't want to overly simple, I don't want to go too far over this overboard with the details, but um, he does wear very distinctive like khaki shirts and things. And um, this uh, photograph that, <clears throat> the reference that I'm using, he's sort of leaning back into the photograph um, giving a thumbs up, but I'm sort of capturing him at the shoulders. So I'm doing a classic portrait concept or construct, right? Portraits, that's the name of the proportions as well. Portrait proportions. It means it's vertical, right? If it was landscape, it'd be horizontal. That doesn't mean you don't do portraits horizontal or landscapes vertical. It's just a term that gives you a quick reference. So all of the elements, we've just done a quick little signature there. All of the elements are here. I've got his head turned slightly to the side so I get a, a slight indication of, of perspective. And uh, just playing around with the shapes. You know, he hasn't, I haven't 100% got the character yet. All the likeness, I don't think, not 100%. It's almost there. So I'm going to play more with the um, contrasts and then start to build up the details with the um, pressing a little bit harder with the brown pencil, right? And then going into the very, very dark areas where I want some, some black details, you know, like the pupil of the eyes or something, um, other wrinkles and things. So I'm trying to uh, establish a hierarchy. That's a good word, isn't it? Hierarchy. What does that mean? Hierarchy means you've got a... Uh, sorry, I'm doing... <laughs> this thing's got to have a, a ball in order for the white paint to wake up. I didn't bring my, um, my other Posca. I might just... Uh, We'll work on that later. So, um, there's a tiny little hot spot, like a hi highlight in the middle of the, um, the iris, or the, sorry, the pupil, that indicates the, um, the flash of the light, like the um, photographer's light. Let's see if I can wake up the Posca. It's like a little paint pen. The reason why I'm doing this is I'm just giving a slight indication of where the the lightest parts that I want to play with here and where are the darkest parts. So this is gonna, it's like a white out that it'll, it'll dry quite quickly I think. Okay so so a little bit of uh, stating the obvious here. 
You know when you do the whites of the eyes, be very careful because eyes are not white, okay? The only thing that's white is the reflections of light. Uh, eyeballs or sclera, that's the, the white of the eye, is, uh, is a tone. So depending on your health, there are a lot of different factors, but they're generally not white unless they're artificially, you know, like lit by uh, something and so it's absolutely you know a reflective like a mirror um, so just be careful of that and teeth teeth are not white either so you don't need to make these glaringly white you just need to indicate that they're lighter in tone than the background because tone tone is relative right it's relative so you don't need very much to make the um, the eyeballs look like eyeballs and the teeth look like teeth. Um, you don't need to overcompensate by it. So try not to think of the, um, the symbol of the eye or the symbol of the mouth or the symbol of teeth when you're drawing. Just look at the reference and make a decision as to how light or dark to make it in relation to the rest of the features of the face. Right? So don't just assume that something's white. It's not. Don't ever assume. Just really get in there and look at it and make a value judgment based on what you what the impression is that you can you, you see. What what is it that you see rather than what you think you see? Okay? So So generally, uh, highlights like this work in terms of muscles and stuff, they work where the, the light sort of gathers in these little pockets of um, f forms, of muscle forms. So I think now what I might do is try to get in here uh, with the, some darks. As I said to you before, you know, his eyes are kind of starstruck by, <laughs> by the, um, the flash of the photographer. Um, again, when you're doing eyes, always be aware that, try to think of how the eye is created, right? It's a ball underneath these layers of skin so it's not just a symbol of the eye, right? Just think about the actual construction and what's in front and what's behind, right? And look at the reference and don't just look at the reference and say, right, there's black here, there's black there. You have to think about the uh, forms that, that you're drawing themselves, the anatomy of the forms. When you look at eyes, they're not as simple as you think. So don't be scared about them, just sort of look at them dispassionately, just look at them for the interesting areas of uh, overlapping skin and pinching and creasing and how you can best um, capture it. What's the appropriate level of, of pressing hard with the pencil? So again, you know, there's contrast here. Uh, I might just try to, I hope this, this won't wreck it. I just need a little bit of contrast between the blacks of the, uh, the rest of the forms that I'm outlining. Now I'm not going to go over all the forms. I'm not outlining everything, I'm just going to help the shadows a little bit. And also while I'm doing it I'll pick out some of the peculiarities, the little tiny bumps and things that I can find. Right, and maybe exaggerate them if I can. He has a little 
birth a little mole there. There's a, a closer pinching of the muscles here around his mouth, his laugh lines. Okay, so this is, that's yeah, not too bad. Now, when it comes to the lips, be judicious, be careful, because you're not outlining, remember, you don't want to outline everything yet. You just want to see what the values are and how important those values are in the overall picture. I, he has actually bigger front teeth, which I've kind of missed. Um, I might try to fix that up later. So it's not a perfect process. I'm just looking at finding elements on the paper that make sense to me. That's all it is. So it's, it's, a, it's a puzzle, it's a game, right? I'm trying to solve it. Is there a right way and a wrong way? No, it's just a way. You just have to persist, you've got to, uh, uh, just a little quick word to the outlines, uh, the contours, of course, you can um, play with those and exaggerate those a little bit with the thickness. Um, again, it's creating a sense of drama. You know how people, when they work with a brush, they tend to have thick and thin lines, right? So um, with a pencil, you can kind of approximate that by going back over things like this is a beautiful little curve of that cheek you know it's really nice shows a lot of rubberiness and and energy which is great um, you want to try to think about that when you're drawing it because it's part of the personality I guess of the of the uh, of Steve you know energy high energy exuberation feeling good you know like if you ever want to feel feel good um, watch Steve, the way he, he interacts with, with animals and with people. You know, he's a, he, he was a very warm, sadly missed, he's a very warm human being. And uh, we love him. And we'll always remember him. There's some, some great moments on film, isn't there, of him interacting with with animals. So it's kind of like David Attenborough in a different way, you know? <laughs> more like, more fun, I guess. Not that David Attenborough is not fun, he is fun. But he's fun in a different way, in more of a, a serious, serious scientific way. So um, it's just, uh, you know, playing with the contours, the outer contours of the face and it gives a sense of drama between the foreground, the background. So when I say drama, I mean there's a, there's a clear sense of difference. Okay, so <clears throat> another thing too, which I've kind of um, messed up a little bit, the working back on your work, even though this is not pencil or charcoal, which are very messy, uh, this is color pencils, so there's a little bit of it will allow you to move your hand across the work without too much smudging. But just be aware that a barrier paper is always handy for drawing. Sorry, I'm knocking the camera a bit with my head. <clears throat> There's a kind of a balancing act here <laughs> that I'm, um, I'm performing. I'm sorry I'm not interacting with... Uh, with your comments, um, but you know, leave them in the comments, leave, leave them in the feed and um, we'll talk about them, you know, later on. Especially, you know, if you guys have any other ideas that uh, you want me to draw, anyone else, you know, someone that's, I want to do something every day or every few days, every couple of days or whatever Something that inspires us, makes us feel good, you know? And that could be like, 
Goku or uh, Yogi Bear or someone like that. You know, it doesn't have to be a real person. Um, it's just a way of um, enjoying ourselves because, you know what, we, we kind of deserve it. We need to acknowledge that uh, this is it's hard on us. You know, we're not used to this sort of uh, isolation and uncertainty, you know. Um, we haven't gone through depressions and many of us haven't gone through recessions. So, you know, we'll be okay if we stick together. We'll be all right. We're a lot better off than, um, you know, people were in the, uh, the so-called um, Great Depression. Um, and they, uh, they, they, as soon as they got out of that, they went into a world war. So, you know, we're doing quite well in terms of that. Um, of course, the flu virus, you know, the Spanish flu um, decimated the world. This is, I mean, what I'm not saying what we're, that this isn't bad. This is very bad. And I feel very, very sad and, and um, you know, for the, for the victims, for people that suffer from this. Uh, luckily, uh, a lot of us have been uh, spared this so far. How long that will ta how long that will last? Who knows? But you know, again, all I'm saying is, let's just try to keep focused on our um, our happy spots. You know, our happy our happy thoughts. What was it, Winnie the Pooh's um, thoughtful spot? Um, well, not so much that, but a happy thought, like uh, Robin Williams in um, in in uh, Hook. You know, um, think of your your happy thought. So, why am I drawing Steve Irwin? I'm drawing Steve Irwin because um, he makes me feel good. He makes me happy. You know, I like to look at his his face and think about all of the uh, great videos that he's made and, and made us, you know, appreciate and love animals as much as he did, you know? I mean, that is, in itself, that's a great achievement, you know? For us to think about, like, wild animals. Who can love a crocodile? <laughs> well, you know, it's important to... I think acknowledge Steve and many other people. You know, if if they're important to us, they've moved us, they've touched our hearts, they've they've inspired us in many ways. You know, um, just to acknowledge that. So a caricature is what I do. Uh, a lot of the times, I find it very cathartic. I find it very interesting. It creates a sense of play, a sense of puzzle and um, adventure, almost, in the drawing. That's what I look for. I look for a sense of play. This is what you should employ when you draw. Just have a play with a pencil and see what happens. And there's no mistakes. You know, there's only, um, as Bob Ross would say, there's... There are no there are no errors, there are no mistakes. There's just um, there's just um, different. Uh, I've forgotten actually the quote. We'll have to sort of sort that out better. But um, really, we only learn by experimentation. That's it. We can only learn by experimentation. There's no des there's no perfect destination. There's no arriving at the, at the end of the drawing saying, well, that was perfect. It's not always going to be perfect. That's not the point. But did you have fun doing it? And did you learn something in the process? You know, yeah. That's what you need. That's why it's not the end result, right? That's why I'm making this video. 
I'm not showing you an end result, a perfect caricature of Steve Irwin. That's not the point. The point is, I don't know how it will end. It may end well, it may not end well. We're in this together. I'm as, in, as mystified as you. If it works, it works. If it doesn't work, well, okay, I've learned something. So you should have the same sense of, of play when you draw, okay? That's what, this is what you need. You see this black against the, the paper. I'm not keen on that, so I'm gonna try to warm it up a little bit. You can see over here where I've put the black uh, pencil. It's a little bit um, gentler to the eye. It doesn't look like it's black on paper. There's a little bit of warmth to it, right? So I'm going back into the shading over here. And there we go. So um, let's see what I can do with this uh, pen now that I've juiced it up. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it will work. But if it doesn't, it doesn't. The important thing with highlights, with, with white in this process, is it's sort of a sculptural process in a way, right? Just be very careful how much you put in. So I'm putting in things that I know to be wet, I know to be shiny, you know, little spots of oil in the face. Um, just, just here and there, just to help kick out the, um, you know, the, the, the highlights to make it more sort of sculptural, just here and there. Uh, that highlight actually can s stand to be a bit wider, I think. Yep, that'll do. Um, put some shine on the teeth more. I wonder if I should put some highlights there. The, the problem with chins is that, especially um, this one, because of the beard, it tends to be quite dark, quite red, or quite, you know, have a, uh, a five o'clock shadow or something like that. So um, you, really, you really need to study things and not assume that something is light because it, it's facing the, the, the light or it's light because, hey, it's the white of the eye or it's the teeth. They are always white, aren't they? Not always. It's not a matter of what you think. It's a matter of seeing and um, really putting down what you, what you see rather than what you think you see. So I wish I had the bigger poskas and things here to be able to play with more contrast. I'm going to try and um, See if I can. This is really the wrong size Posca. You need to have a thicker one. That you can see is a little bit puny in relation to the the rest of the um, the illustration. There's quite a lot of area to cover. Um, okay, so in that point, I will maybe. I wonder if this will, no, that won't work. Okay, so in, in situations like this, I apologize, I, I should have brought a thicker white Posca to make more um, dramatic um, the contour, you know, the, the difference between the positive space and the negative space. So I'm just actually creating an ultimate difference between the background and the foreground between Steve and not Steve. So I'm just using a series of hatch lines and hopefully build up a little bit of contrasting tone. 
between them. So, it's okay. I'm just, it, it's all right. The thing about the paint markers is that they're opaque, right? I mean, it's a little bit annoying because they don't, you have to activate them by shaking them. Um, but they're opaque, so you can see I'm actually obliterating all the, the pencil lines underneath pretty much. With, uh, with the paint marker. So, you know, the, the idea behind this, using three color pencils, a black pencil, a white pencil, and a brown pencil. And you start light and loose with the brown pencil and you gradually build up the tone, you gradually build up the details that you want, right, without committing. So you're not doing dark lines yet until you're absolutely sure about where those lines should be. So take your time, enjoy the process, you know. Certain parts of the process you can take your mind off, off or the, your, your eyes off the reference. Like I'm, at the moment, I'm trying to create this dramatic three-dimensional popping out of the foreground, if I can help it, if I can try to create a, a difference. Um, so you can use um, gouache or gouache is a opaque watercolor you can use a watercolor um, this paper this is a um, I'll, actually I'll show you what this book is in a sec but I just want to continue with this um, I'm coloring in the negative space right I've created negative space with this framing element this frame within a frame this box and I've had the character's head pop out slightly out of the box to give a 3d effect So, yeah, it's, it's a bit hard with these tiny little spindly lines to, that, to create a dramatic effect. Um, so it's a bit softer than I would have liked, I guess. Uh, I might continue to put more contrast with the black, maybe. Fix this line a little bit. I might do is uh, I might see if I can extend the thickness of the uh, outlines here and there that might help have it stand out a little bit so what I'm using here is a, a brush pen Faber-Castell brush pen which means that it has if you press hard, it goes thicker, the lines. You press lightly, they go thinner. So I don't want to outline the hair. Just want to outline some of the uh, larger forms. Um, help it a little bit yeah so um, that's it for what it's worth I think um, we've created a sculptural effect right so if you want to um, do some free art classes at the moment well they're not at the moment they're free 
Just join up on um, www. No need to say that. Drawing hacks, one word, dot art. Drawing hacks, dot art. And that will take you to a meetup page. And what we're going to be doing is some uh, classes using Zoom. And um, they'll be fun, they'll be live. And they'll also be, probably I'll record them as well for future use. And um, yeah, we can, we can meet up there. In the meantime, I wanna keep doing this. So, you know, um, share, do all that stuff. Share on uh, Facebook or whatever. And um, think of, you know, what makes you happy? What, what character from TV or movies or public life or, you know, whatever. Um, have a think of that because, you know, we need to, we need to stick together and we need to make a difference and we need to feel better. We need to feel good. So I don't want to feel, I don't want to feel sad. I want to feel happy. And I think, you know, we can do that. We can inspire each other maybe with these, these ideas, these caricatures. Um, so I'm going to finish off here because I can't really do very much without all of the materials, but I think um, it's been fun. I think we've achieved quite a lot. It's, is it 100% successful? You be the judge. I think it kind of sort of... It kind of sort of captures, I've been trying to capture his personality. So it kind of sort of captures his personality, I guess. Um, you know, but it's been very interesting. It's been a lot of fun. So I'll sign off now and uh, we'll talk, we'll, we'll be back again very, very soon. Okay, bye-bye.